For this question, we are given the listed diffraction angles for the first three peaks of X-ray diffraction, assuming first order reflections, for some metal. Monochromatic radiation with a wavelength 0.1542 nanometers is used, and the question goes on to ask us to determine whether this crystal structure for the metal is FCC, BCC, or neither FCC nor BCC, and to give a reason for this choice. And part B asks us, if the crystal structure is BCC or FCC, identify which of the metals in a table gives this diffraction pattern. So let's recap important info. We're told it's first order reflection, and we're given the wavelength. So now we can dive into part A. For part A, to determine whether the crystal structure is FCC, BCC, or neither FCC nor BCC, we can follow a series of steps. Step one, determine DHKL, that's the interplanar spacing, for each of these reflections. Step two, use DHKL to calculate the lattice parameter for the first three FCC and BCC reflections. Step three, see whether the lattice parameter is changing or constant. If it's changing, then you pick the wrong structure. If it's constant, then you probably have the right structure. So let's start by determining DHKL for these reflections. To do so, we can use Bragg's Law. N times lambda equals 2D H K L times sine of theta. Now we're told it's a first order reflection, so this is just equal to one, so we can ignore it. We can go ahead and rearrange for DHKL as follows. In the next slide, we'll go ahead and show what these values are. Here's our same table as before, but now we've added another column, which is the DHKL values for the first three reflections. With step one finished, we can now turn to step two, which is use these DHKL values to calculate lattice parameter for the first three FCC and BCC reflections. To do so, we need to know what HKL values to use for the first three reflections of each different crystal structure type. For FCC in the book, we are told that H, K, and L need to be either all even or all odd. So something like 111 works, but 110 does not work because it's not all even or all odd. Zero, remember, is counted as an even number. For BCC, we are told H plus K plus L must be an even number. Now in this course, which is an introductory material science course, we don't know where these rules come from. We're just going to use them. In a later diffraction or characterization of materials course, you'll likely learn where these rules come from. But that's fine for now to just use them. That said, how do we answer the question of which will come first? Well, Bragg's Law tells us lambda equals 2d sine theta. Therefore, if we want the first peaks, we want this to be minimized. This is a constant. Therefore, we want d to be as large as possible to determine which peaks will come first. So DHKL should be maximized. Well, how do we relate DHKL to HKL? Well, we have the expression 1 over d squared HKL equals h squared plus k squared plus l squared all over the lattice parameter squared. Or in other words, if we know that the lattice parameter is a constant and we want to maximize DHKL, that means we want to minimize h squared plus k squared plus l squared. Therefore, in the book, it shows us that for FCC, the first three peaks are 111, 200, 220. Again, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. Would equal 3 here, 4 here, and 8 here. So the very lowest values correspond to the first peaks. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and plug it in to the expression that we just did on the other page. 1 over d squared equals h squared plus k squared plus l squared all over a squared. Rearranging and solving for a, the lattice parameter, we write these three expressions for the 111 family, the 200 family, and the 220 family. 
When I plug values in, I calculate the following. 0 0.403 nanometers for the lattice parameter of the first reflection. But the second reflection has 0 0.33 nanometers for, uh, that we find for the lattice parameter. And the third reflection has a lattice parameter of 0 0.38 nanometers. Therefore, since A1 does not equal A2, and that does not equal A3, we can confidently say that the metal is not FCC. So let's take a look at BCC. For BCC, these are our first three peaks, the 110, the 200, and the 211. In all these cases, these values add up to even for H plus, H plus K plus L. So just as before, we can calculate the lattice parameter, and when I do so now, I find for the first one that it's equal to 0 0.3295 nanometers. For the second reflection, we find that the lattice parameter is 0 0.33 nanometers. For the third reflection, we get 0 0.329 nanometers. Therefore, these are all approximately equal. And this metal must be BCC. So now we can turn our attention to part B in the problem. Part B says, if the crystal structure is either BCC or FCC, which it is, identify which of the metals in this table gives us the diffraction pattern. So first step in this table, which gives us metal, crystal structure, and atomic radius for uh, many different metals, let's start by identifying which ones are BCC. So it might be chromium. It might be iron, alpha. It might be molybdenum, tantalum, or tungsten. The others we can rule out. Now how do we determine which of these five metals is the metal that we're looking at? We're clearly going to have to relate something about the atomic radius, which we're given here in the two different columns. We're going to relate that to the lattice parameter, which we just calculated. How do we do that? Well, we remember that in the BCC crystal structure, we have an edge length from here down to here, and this is our lattice parameter. If you go across the bottom face of this cube, you have this line, and we know that that would be, if this is A and that's A, that this length would be square root of 2 times A. But what we really want to know is this distance from corner to corner, right? And we can use Pythagorean's theorem to recognize that this will be square root of 3 times A. And that distance from corner to corner covers 1, 2, 3, 4 atomic radii. This equals 4R. So we know what our lattice parameter is. A, we decided, is equal to 0 0.329 nanometers. So let's go ahead and plug that in here and solve for R. R must equal square root of 3 times 0 0.329 nanometers. We'll take and we'll divide that by 4, and we find that the radii of our metal should be 0 0.1428 nanometers. 0 0.1428 nanometers. Let's see how that compares to some of the metals in the table. Well, we want to find radii 0 0.1428 nanometers. So is it iron? Nope, that's too small. Is it chromium? Too small. Molybdenum, too small. Tantalum, that's a pretty good match. And tungsten would be too small. So we can say with pretty good confidence that the metal must be tantalum.